Yes. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody, wherever you are. A very warm welcome to our conference, Working Time Reduction and Climate Crisis. Due to the corona crisis, we are meeting in this online format and not in the rooms of ETUI, of the European Trade Unions Institute as in Brussels, as originally planned. I am Margareta Steinrücke from the working group Arbeit fair Teilen of Attack Germany, together with Adrien Tussaud from Réseau Roosevelt, Aidan Harper from the New Economics Foundation and others. We are coordinating the European Network for the Fair Sharing of Working Time that is organizer of this conference. The Rosa Luxemburg Foundation Brussels is supporting us very generously. Without its support, the network could not exist. Many thanks. Also many thanks to the ETUI for its support for this conference. This network has the goal to connect organizations, initiatives and persons from science, politics, trade unions, social movements, and others around the question, what's going on with working time reduction in Europe? And how can we better coordinate and promote these trials? It began to work in 2013 with a big conference in Strasbourg and is organizing every second year a conference for this behalf. We are proud to say that the network has in the meanwhile around 60 members from 15 European countries. The youngest is Iceland. This year, we want to exchange and discuss about the contribution which working time reduction can make to fight the climate change. At the moment somewhat covered by the corona crisis, the climate crisis is the deepest crisis and the most urgent to fight for the whole mankind. And studies like the one our member Philip Fry made for the Autonomy Institute, it's called the ecological limits of working time, show that when we want to reach the 1.5 degree goal of Paris, we have to reduce our working time to around 10 hours per week. So working time reduction is a crucial and constitutional part of the fight against the climate crisis. But also for the just transition in all the climate destroying industry, we need a strong working time reduction to save, respectively give back jobs to the workers who will lose their old ones. Here, the trade unions are specially demanded as they are the main actor in the field of working time reduction. The demand of the eight hours day was founding the 1st of May as Labor Day. At the moment, we have a running big experiment with working time reduction within the Corona crisis. The so-called Kurzarbeit or short time work is a working time reduction for saving workplaces already successful in the finance crisis 2009. But the relationship ship of trade unions to the climate issue and the climate movement is not a simple one. Often the conservation of jobs at any price for the concrete workers is nearer than the long time prospective for the whole mankind. There are no jobs on a dead planet, it's true but not easy to bring in the head of people with concrete fear for their existence. But there are trade unions 
that are trying to bring together these two questions. I'm very glad to welcome Sophie Jenicke from IG Metall, which has fought successfully for working time reduction in 2018 and made the social ecological transformation to its main issue for the next years. And also, for example, Jean Sweeney from the Trade Union for Energy Democracy. He will join us tomorrow. The TUED is a worldwide network of trade unions which explicitly fight for the workers and the climate or environment perspective. The trade unions are a very important player for the working time reduction, also in relation to the fight against the climate crisis. But without the huge commitment of all the other movements, climate movements like Fridays for Future, social movements like Attack and Rezo Roosevelt, women's movement, move, movements of unemployed, of people in science, politics, and churches, and many others, they will not succeed in the fight for working time reduction. So we have here in this conference a lot of other wonderful speakers from science, from politics and social movements and other trade unions I welcome hereby. Many thanks for your commitment and your contributions. I wish us an interesting and productive conference and pass the word now to Andreas Thompson, head of the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation Brussels, and to Philippe Pochet, director of ETUI, for a welcome address. And afterwards to my colleague Adrian, who will explain us the agenda and the proceeding. So, Andreas, it's your turn. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a real pleasure to have this uh, um, conference here and uh, to continue with the cooperation with the network, even now, if this uh, has to be unfortunately digital. And I'm really hoping that uh, uh, we can meet you and we can meet again, uh, maybe next year, maybe then actually in Brussels and in presence. So this is uh, the whole thing is about work time reduction. So I believe a, a welcoming address uh, should be quite brief. Um, um, and then I will try uh, to do this as brief as possible. But still, um, I want to stress how important the cooperation and the whole issue um, for us in, uh, in Brussels and for the Luxembourg Foundation is um, I said we uh, might meet again next year in Brussels or somewhere else, but still we don't know how the crisis uh, we are living in now will develop further. And it's not only obviously a medical uh, crisis, it is a severe economical crisis, it is a social crisis, and this is uh, a crisis which is now framing everything, literally everything we are doing uh, um, in politics and developing uh, um, progressive and leftist concepts. So it will also shape uh, discussions on the question of uh, work time reduction. It will, will of course also shape uh, discussions on Green New Deal or everything else. Um, since this crisis now frames everything, it is more, much more important to further develop progressive ideas and concepts like uh, um, work time reduction and um, I'm not, um, I'm actually not one of them uh, saying uh, the crisis now, this kind of crisis now creates uh, large opportunities and chances for the left. It is as, as always, it is a question, um, it is a question of uh, the relation of powers and it is a question of the actual social struggles. It is a question of the ideas and the concepts um, which will give a direction for the future. But we also know deep crises often lead to changes, uh, to paradigmatic changes in economics, in social uh, politics. Uh, so there might be a chance in it also uh, for the question um, uh, for work time reduction. Uh, this severe economical crisis can also, and I believe easily, 
uh, lead to a, a massive return of neoliberalism or even worse. So it is still a question how we approach the crisis and which kind of concepts and ideas we develop. Um, but at the same time now, we are seeing in this crisis, in this actual crisis, how important state intervention and regulations actually are. So this is uh, something that could give us hope in uh, many aspects. As I said, um, it is as always, future is unwritten. And it is the question, um, uh, what the several forces, but also progressive and leftist forces now find ways and directions and concepts and ideas uh, to take part in the struggle for the future. And there, uh, transnational organizing and discussion like you and we are doing here is something to give us hope and perspective uh, for the futures. Because still, the struggles have to be led locally or on a national basis. But the exchange of experiences, the solidarity across the borders um, is a lot. Um, and it can lead to much more. So I'm very, very glad to see that uh, the network is not even that impressive wide, European wide and also worldwide, I believe. Um, it is also broadening and you have new members also from, uh, from countries not being part of the European Union, like from Iceland. And this is also a, a good development. Um, in the end, and also in the beginning, uh, the struggle for work time reduction is one of the most, most original and genuine struggles of workers' movement. It is directly addressing the relations between workforce and capital. It is a struggle connected to the question of distribution of profits or respectively surplus value to self-determination. And in the end, it's also a struggle uh, connected to the question of sovereignty. This is why we, as Brussels Office of Rosa Luxemburg Foundation, will definitely stay with this issue and um, with this important cooperation we have uh, with the network. Now, it should, uh, it should have been brief and it will be brief. Um, so it's a special um, pleasure for me uh, to give the word then uh, to Philippe Couchet of Etui. Um, um, it, is, it is very important that uh, organizations uh, like uh, the European um, um, trade unions organizations are involved in this, uh, this mm -hmm. uh, um, struggle. And the last word I, <laughs> I have to say, um, I wish, of course, you, us, very much success with this uh, uh, conference, fruitful exchange and discussions, and again, hopefully meet again in Brussels someday, hopefully next year. Thank you very much. Yes, that's. Uh, I think it's my turn. Uh, the, um, um, as Margarita was saying, that uh, we should have the pleasure to meet in the premise of the TUI and to inaugurate a new, new uh, hybrid room that we have in the ground floor and uh, have this conference and have all the discussion and the important uh, informal uh, discussion. But no, it's the, the new reality, and uh, we have to do that uh, online. We are used to do that, but we still miss the, the quality of this kind of informal conversation. Even with online, we can continue uh, the conversation and this conversation is particularly uh, important. And I'm very happy uh, from the Institute is the first time that we have, to, uh, we support uh, formally uh, this, uh, the, this network, the attack, the Réseau Roosevelt, and uh, we are happy also to work with the uh, uh, Rosa Luxembourg Shiftum uh, in Brussels, uh, because I, I think uh, also it, it shows the variety of point of view and the possible collaboration that we, we need uh, on uh, the topic. And I will return to that uh, at uh, uh, the end. Uh, for us at the Institute, it's a very important topic. It will be in a world program and uh, it will be uh, also in the perspective of, of climate change. But we, uh, with all the crisis, uh, I think that's the well, what uh, all we are on the left and the, in the various part of the left. We are generally uh, thinking that we will change the paradigm and that we will uh, win something. And last crisis was unfortunately uh, what we, we we did. And I would like to to start 
putting that in perspective, we because uh, and was set by 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 the previous intervention too. Uh, I think that the out of the COVID, uh, the kind of socio-ecological transition that we will discuss now and and uh, the the impact or, or, or the possibility to to develop or the necessity to develop reduction of working time. I think it's uh, just one of the the possible scenario that we have uh, on the table, and uh, the first one is the. Uh, the return uh, uh, of uh, austerity and uh, the uh, never-ending neoliberalism uh, is also on the table uh, and not perhaps in short term, but uh, uh, let's uh, be sure that it, it will not return. But we have also uh, other scenario that I, I think uh, could be also rather frightening. I, I call that the authoritarian scenario uh, and could be linked with the green uh, approach is the Chinese. Uh, Okay, that's where we protect our citizens uh, and uh, in an authoritarian state, including to have an uh, ambitious goal uh, for uh, uh, cl climate change and uh, CO2 uh, emission. And finally, uh, this kind of uh, full consumption uh, or Keynesianism uh, scenario that we return to uh, spending, spending, and we don't care, take, take flight, take care, uh, that's important for growth, uh, etc. So. I think that we, what we, we will discuss uh, on the two days uh, is one of the scenario and uh, uh, we have to be uh, very cautious uh, to avoid the, the other scenario too. Uh, what seems to me uh, important uh, starting for out of the COVID uh, crisis uh, is the climate change strategy and the change in the climate change uh, strategy. And I, I think that it's nice to put a new figure and uh, to say, okay, we move to 40 to 55 to 60 percent of, of reduction uh, at European level, and we can put a nice figure. But if you take that seriously, and we have to take that seriously, because if we don't go in that direction, uh, the, the consequences could be uh, dramatic or will be dramatic. Um, it, it means that we will have uh, a, a rapid change in the, 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 the production. It, it will be uh, not a smooth transition. We can call that just transition. Everyone likes something just, but it will be a just transition. We will be a, a just transition in a short time and, and with a lot of, of, of change. And uh, there is some discussion here uh, also about the car industry, but the car industry will uh, be uh, affected dramatically. Uh, and the workers in the car industry, if we take that seriously, because we will not go for hybrid and then uh, electric car, we, we will have to accelerate to electric car, which have uh, some consequences uh, uh, on the, 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 the workforce, uh, and not only the workforce for the electric car, but uh, I think nobody is dreaming to have a traffic jam with the electric car. So we will have another mobility. It's not the goal to have traffic jam with the uh, electric car. Perhaps in my third scenario, full consumption. That's kind of some dream to have that. But that's not our goal. So I, I take a, a sector with 10 million workers. It's not the, the, the small sector of, of, of coal, which is 400,000. That's kind of uh, statistical error in, in the, the when, when, when you can. And that is just one example. What I want to say uh, now is that we, we, we are changing and we will change if we go much quicker and that will be much more difficult than, than before because in 30 years we reduce by 25% the emission and now in 10 years we have to reduce by 30%. So when we have that, what are the, the, the solution? And I think what should be uh, uh, and that's where for me uh, and for the Institute of Working Time is coming back. What could be the, the, the kind of the mark, or what the brand, what, what we want to achieve? And you can see what you, all the, the variable, but I, I think on working time is the most important, is the most distinctive that will give the direction that we want to achieve for the future to avoid also the, the other scenario, the, 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 the austerity austerity scenario, the, the authoritarian scenario, the uh, full consumption scenario. And that's why I, I think it's it's important. It's important, but it, it will not go between uh, be, be without fight, without difficulty, and we, without uh, discussion. And then I, I finish uh, with that. 
and and that's why I, I think this this uh, conference is so important because uh, as uh, was said by the two previous uh, speaker uh, we need to to expand the conversation we we need to to uh, to to create consensus and we we need also to have conflict i think that there is no problem for trade unions to have conflict but we have to to create consensus understanding and also a, a, a way uh, forward a, a, and I, I think that's important that uh, the most important trade union in europe uh, at least by the numbers uh ig metal uh, but certainly with the also the the, the importance uh, that this trade union has in, in the the world debate in europe it is returning and pushing the the, the working time uh, in uh, such uh, uh, circumstances because it is no longer kind of idea of uh, some kind of idealist uh, people that have nice idea but uh, difficult to put it in place it could be also uh, pushing by real actor having some leverage uh, on the situation so thank you uh, we are very happy to to contribute on that and as everyone said uh, we hope that you will uh, come in the uh, ETY premise it will not be uh, for the inauguration of, of, of this room i hope that we will have uh, other events before but uh, next year which also show that we would like to to continue this comparison and this first step that we have to know thank you yeah thank you so much philip Poche. and uh, now i will give the word to adrien he will explain us now the proceedings of the whole conference. Yes, uh, welcome everyone. So uh, on today's program, we'll have two roundtables. Uh, one roundtable is about the recent example of initiative and experimentation on work and time reduction in Europe. So Philippe was talking about uh, IG Metal, so we have a presentation from the IG Metal experimentation and from others from Belgium and Iceland. And uh, the idea of this table is to uh, give concrete example and uh, show that something is moving and uh, it, it, it's not, a, like you said, an utopia, but a concrete idea that, can, that could have a real impact. Uh, after this from table, we will have a second round Roundtable on the place on work time reduction in the post growth society. So, with three speakers, we had Juliet Shaw, Will, uh, Will Strong, and Beat Zippelman. And the idea is to replace um, or to debate about this, uh, this vision of, future, of uh, the future we want uh, and what is the place uh, of work time, or work time reduction in our society. And um, to all the, 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 the challenges and the who, that you, you have mentioned, uh, Andreas and Philippe, and we have to, 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 to challenge and uh, to, to move forward. Uh, and a bit the, so that's one table will be will, uh, the space to have that discussion and to uh, give some guidelines about it. again and welcome to our first panel on the recent examples of initiatives and experimentation of the working time reduction in Europe. We took an um, exemplaric selection of uh, examples from Germany, from Iceland and from Belgium. And um, in this case, we have to organize the panel in uh, uh, the following way. We first will give the word to Sophie Jenicke from the IG Metall. Um, she will speak and afterwards we will uh, discuss um, uh, directly her uh, contribution. Then, because uh, Sophie has to leave us um, rather early, around I think uh, 2.30 or 2.40 and then we will go on uh, with Gudmundur and uh, uh, 50 minute speech and uh, um, uh, 50 minute discussion then with Maxim uh, the same procedure and at the end we have a half an hour for the general discussion. Okay so uh, I now proudly present uh, 
Sophie Jenniken. She is um, uh, working in the Department for Collective, collective Bargaining uh, of the IG Metall and uh, they're responsible for all the questions of working time. And uh, IG Metall is um, the, I think, always biggest and mightiest trade union of the world. And uh, um, in the year 2018, uh, the IG Metall really began after a long silence of more than 20 years to uh, go on with the fight for working time reduction and successfully uh, reached some uh, uh, agreement on this uh, uh, topic. And uh, now in the crisis of Corona, but uh, that was uh, um, before already a crisis in the automobile industry, uh, again, the IG Metall is thinking about working time reduction in a, a more general way. Now I give the word to Sophie Enk. Yes, hello everybody and uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a real pleasure for me uh, to tell you something about IG Metall working time policies. Yes, and I have to ap apologize in advance that I have to have er uh, to leave earlier because uh, I have another panel at three in another online Zoom conference. Uh, so I'm doing a bit of conference hopping during these days. Um, I will try to make my screen visible. Wait. Yep. Uh, can you see it? Yes, okay. Uh, I can somebody say something because I can't hear you anymore. Yes, yes, we ah, perfect. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, let me start first and then if I talk too much, please stop me. Um, yeah, maybe uh, in the beginning a few general words. Um, as Margarete introduced, uh, IG Metall did uh, a lot of working time policy, but not always, let's say. We had the big times of uh, working time policies in the 80s where IG Metall uh, went on strike for the 35 uh, hour week very successfully in Germany. So now we have a weekly working time of 35 hours in the uh, German metal industry. And um, then, yeah, there was a, a, a period of silence around working time policy, I would say. Um, this had several reasons, um, because I think uh, you have waves of, of issues in, in trade union policies. And after reaching the 35 hour week uh, in the West of Germany, uh, you have to say, um, IG Metall did a lot of other things. We invented new, uh, wage systems in the metal industry. So um, we did a lot of other things. And uh, in the meanwhile, uh, working time policy went from the collective, uh, from, from a collective issue, from a trade union issue to uh, an issue more dealt with in the companies, uh, which meant that we, we faced a lot of flexibilization uh, of working time in the companies, working time uh, became longer than before and uh, also important working time in the companies became more unhealthy. So we had an increase of uh, unhealthy sh shift systems, for example. So um, yeah, a lot of, of uh, um, developments in working time which uh, have not been really uh, in favor for the workers. So um, yeah, voices in IG Metall uh, became louder and louder uh, to, to um, go back to, to working time policies, um, but it was not so easy to be honest. Um, and IG Metall made a lot of effort uh, during the last, I would say, seven until five years uh, 
to get working time as an issue back uh, on the agenda. We did two big uh, surveys. Uh, the, the second one, especially on working time. Um, we did a big working time campaign, uh, which led into a negotiation round uh, in 2018, uh, where we came to new regulations on working time, uh, as uh, Margarita already mentioned. Um, we have to say that uh, this was not easy for us. Uh, we needed industrial action, we needed strikes to achieve those new regulations, and um, I, I will come back to this, but um, I think what was the most important for the people um, was to get more uh, self-determination uh, on, on their working time again. Um, and then we reached this, um, this results you see there, maybe uh, you remember them because I presented it in the last meeting uh, of the network already. That's why I want to keep it short. Um, we got a new regulation that certain kind of people, people who are uh, taking care of children, of elderly or people who are in shift work, uh, get a choosing option. They can choose if they take uh, some kind of annual extra money or if they uh, take eight days off instead. And we achieved the right to reduce full time and go back on uh, go back on on full full time after that. Um, and yeah, this were were the two options we achieved. And um, yeah. Now we are on a different point in the debate again. I mean, we are only two years later, uh, but as mentioned before, we are now in one of the biggest crises uh, you, you can imagine and uh, discussion on working time and especially on working time reduction is uh, back on our agenda. Mm. You can see there, um, that in, in 2018, we had a focus on individual needs. Uh, in, in, reduct, uh, in, in the reduction of working time, because people said we want to have more self-determination uh, with our working time. And now, uh, because of the crisis, we are going a bit back uh, on a collective view on working time. Um, yeah, but I will come back to this later and look at the time. Um, so what we can say after our... Uh, negotiation round and collective bargaining struggle in 2018 was um, that achieving those uh, new new options for workers on working time strengthened the self-confidence of our colleagues in the companies and also strengthened IG Metall as an organization. That has also to do something with the fact that uh, we had industrial action on this because I think if you have industrial action on an issue then the workers uh, are very proud on it and they are, they are taking those regulations much more um, as their own ones because they have been fighting for it. Um, yeah, and what we also achieved is that after a period uh, of, of uh, working time being seen as a very difficult, a very... Uh, uh, yeah, heavy issue, let's say, for uh, uh, shop stewards that um, we now uh, saw that working time is again a successful field of action uh, in the companies and also for IG Metall. And the new options are broadly used. In 2019, 260,000 workers used this option of eight free days uh, instead of money. And in 2000, more already, uh, more than 340,000. Um, so you see that uh, workers are very keen on, on getting more free days, uh, even if they lose money, because uh, they, can, they can change the money into free days. Uh, what is interesting in this is that uh, in this um, changing option, money into time, time is more worth than money. Because if you would uh, simply count the money you can uh, change into time would be six days, but people get eight days. Um, so this is also part of wage compensation, let's say. We imagined to get more, we didn't, but 
at least we get something. Um, and the reduced full time is also used by around 10,000 workers annually. This is not so much like the other option, of course, but it's good for those who would need it. So this is what we did two years ago. Um, and if I'm talking about that, I have the feeling I'm talking about something historic because we are now on a completely different point in our discussion, to be honest. Um, so um, what are the perspectives of, perspectives of working time policy for IG Metall, how to continue? Um, for IG Metall, it is clear that uh, we are further going for uh, either collective and individual options to reduce working time. We discussed this in our congr Congress last year and uh, it was clear that we will go for this further. Um, but now we have three big uh, challenges, let's say, um, which, which determine our discussion about uh, working time. Uh, the first one is, of course, the digital, ecological, and social transformation, which affects, uh, it was said before, a lot of our sectors very, very heavily. Um, if we talk in the in the automotive industry or in the, in the supplies industry about ecological uh, and digital transformation, we are talking uh, about a, a huge, a, a really huge transformation with uh, with a lot of, of, of uh, impacts for the workers, of course. Um, so this is a bit the, the mid-term, long-term perspective we have. Uh, second perspective is, of, co of course, that we are now in a deep and worldwide economic crisis. Um, and those two things coming together, we as IG Metall are facing very concretely a lot of struggles in companies for employment and for the future of sites. Um, because um, you can see in this picture that we are discussing now about a loss of 220,000 uh, jobs in the, in the metal sector. Uh, we collected the announce of layoffs of big companies and these are only the big companies you see here. Um, it started end of last, mid of last year, end of last year, um, that uh, big companies started to announce layoffs. And um, it was because the crisis began, let's say, but I think those layoffs uh, had to do a lot with the transformation which is going on and that they knew they wouldn't need uh, so many workers in the, in the future. Um, and you see, if you, if you uh, count them all together, that we are talking about 220,000, uh, a loss of 220,000 jobs. It's not clear that this will come, of course. It's only what they announced and now, uh, we are discussing and fighting about that, let's say. Um, but this is a challenge for us as trade union, of course. Um, so um, our perspective is now uh, to say again very loudly that working time reduction is an instrument to safeguard employment. And uh, this, uh, it's an instrument for the current crisis as well as for the transformation, which is uh, a more longer or midterm issue, because the transformation will lead to more productivity in the companies. I mean, that's that's the goal of the whole thing. That's why they are doing it. Um, and it will, of course, also to lead, uh, to lead to overcapacities in the companies. And working time uh, reduction can safeguard employment in the longer run via the distribution of the remaining work to more, more workers. Um, but for us as trade union, of course, it's very important to uh, always to say that uh, no matter about which kind of working time reduction we are talking, workers must be able to afford it. So uh, it's not an issue for us to say we reduce working time um, without any wage compensation. Um, so in, uh, in last summer, IG Metall made a proposal which was discussed very broadly in, in the uh, public uh, and in the media. 
and we proposed uh, an option for companies with employment problems to reduce working time to four, four days per week with at least partly wage compensation. Um, to say it clearly, it's not a collective uh, reduction of working time for everybody to a four days working week. We are discussing about an option for companies with employment problems to do this. Um, yeah, why we are saying that, maybe I can, I can tell something uh, about that later. Um, and um, as, I, as I mentioned here, we are talking about uh, a model of four days and uh, eight hours working day. That would mean uh, 32 hours per week. Yeah, um, the main arguments uh, that we discussed in, in the trial for that proposal is that this was, would be an answer to the structural change in the automotive and supply sector because we say transformation must not lead to mass layoffs but to the work for everybody. Um, and of course, in the current crisis, um, it's also a reason for us that industrial jobs and companies uh, can be saved via shorter working time because to save the, the industrial structure of, a, of an economy uh, is for us uh, the key for working uh, economy in the future. And third argument, of course, an improved work-life balance for the workers, because we still see that work, full-time workers have the wish to work shorter uh, due to a better work-life balance. And uh, last but not least, less, commute, uh, less commuting, more climate protection. Uh, there are studies, I think this one is not the only one, that um, if only 10% of the workforce would stay at home one day per week, uh, that would mean a reduction of 850 million kilogram uh, CO2, plus less stress for the workers in the traffic and lower costs for commuting. So this could be uh, actually uh, a win-win situation. There are a lot of more arguments, of course, but uh, due to the time, I, I will stop with those four uh, and we can talk about the others later. Um, so what is important for me here is that to, 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 to make clear that, of course, IG Metall is one uh, of the organizations saying we need working time reduction uh, to safeguard jobs. Um, but it's important to think uh, this, all the struggles for working time reduction together. And you see that, for example, uh, the, the climate aspect is one of our main arguments to reduce working time. So we try to, to get things together, to get different uh, discourses together, and also um, to, to link to the, to the progressive discourses uh, which we have in the society. And I think uh, the one of the climate protection is one of the most important, uh, most important at the moment. Um, we got good media response in the in the public for for this proposal, and of course we had a broad discussion in IG Metall and within our members and in our collective bargaining bodies. And we are discussing currently uh, in our collective bargaining uh, bodies, which means in the in the commissions uh, of of the uh, shop stewards meeting and discussing uh, for which demand we will have in the next collective bargaining round, if we want to have this, uh, this proposal as a demand for the next negotiation, our negotiations will start in December and will then uh, go into the next year. So this is an open question at the moment, but uh, I think we will do something on that in the next collective bargaining round. And of course, we get harsh critics from the employers. There was um, the, the, the boss of, of Gesamtmetall of the Employers Federation who said, this is poison for the metal industry. And the other interesting um, statement was uh, from, from a, um, Employers uh, Federation from Bavaria, uh, who said, yes, this would be a possible option, but of course, only without wage compensation. So you see which struggle we will have to fight if we are going for that. Um, yeah, and this is my last point. We are going now into the negotiations in the metal sector. Uh, these negotiations will be 
very challenging, let's say, because uh, the, the, the issues are big and we have to do all this under the corona conditions. And of course, this is something completely new for us. I mean, to do industrial action uh, under these conditions of uh, people not being allowed to meet uh, with a lot of people and uh, all, the, all the fear people have or the restrictions we have, it will be, well, a very interesting experience how to do a collective bargaining round, especially uh, in such a situation and with such issues for us uh, this year and next year. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Sophie, for this very interesting and uh, very uh, actual and concrete uh, um, contribution. Um, I think uh, I have a lot of questions um, directly on the concrete uh, circumstances of this uh, um, now going on um, bargaining uh, round, but first, we have a question uh, to you uh, from Manuela Klopp uh, from Roland Luxembourg Foundation uh, too. She is asking how could we make sure that the working time reduction in Germany does not lead to relocation of automotive production <laughs> to Eastern Europe? <laughs> and yeah. how do we need a European approach? And who could be possible allies in this fight? Um, yes, of course, we need a European approach. That's why I'm here, of course. Um, and uh, IG Metall is also a member of, of the uh, Industrial Federation of Industrial Europe. Uh, this is our uh, European Federation. And uh, in this, uh, in Industrial Europe, we also have very big uh, discussions about the question of working time reduction and uh, about the, the issue of that uh, actually a lot of unions are discussing now uh, to reduce working time. The problem is uh, a crisis is always a very difficult situation to reduce working time because we, have, uh, we don't have so much uh, instruments of pressure towards uh, the, the employers. Because actually, if you go for working time reduction, um, you have to do industrial action. And this is all. Uh, this is easier in a situation uh, where uh, where the economy is going well, because then uh, workers have uh, much much more pressure than than they have in this situation. So I think it's a difficult discussion. It's a difficult situation for struggle. Um, and of course, we can't uh, make sure that this will not lead to relocation. But I only can say that. Um, this model we proposed is also a model which is affordable for the employers because of course the employers are also saving money if they reduce working time which partly wage compensation because they are saving money for uh, restructuring plans they are saving money for acquisition of, of people um, when the crisis is over and they they have to to get back the um, the well-educated people. Um, so we think this is affordable and um, we made the experience also that you never can completely uh, avoid relocation. Um, and of course, this is one thing uh, which the employers always uh, try to threatening the workers, we will relocate. But on the other hand, uh, we are in touch with our sister trade unions in the other countries. Uh, sometimes it's easier, sometimes it's not so easy, but uh, it's it's fact that we have to do something on that. Um, yeah, so far to this. Okay, and uh, uh, just in the moment we have in Germany strikes in other uh, branches who are not so well organized as the metal, uh, IG Metall, in the public uh, traffic and in the, in the uh, um, hospitals, for example. And they are doing it even if the situation is very difficult and uh, they have support of others. And, uh, and so far, I think it's possible to do something. Okay, so I come to the second question. Um, what models uh, they might have in mind when it comes to the partial compensation of pay? 
the IG Metal is demanding a partial compensation in pay, and uh, how is the concrete um, uh, thinking about it? Yeah. To be honest, that's not figured out at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I, that's uh, this is the thing uh, the struggle will will be about, <laughs> um, and it's not only a question of models but also of power relations. To be honest, I mean. Sure, IG Metall says the more the better, uh, and employers say nothing. That's the situation we are standing in, and so I'm I'm sorry I can tell you more maybe next year I in in May latest, but we'll see. Sorry. <laughs> okay, then a question: Do you have the profile of those who shifted to the 28 hours option for two years? And is there a risk of a gender bias? No. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, because, um, yeah, this, this has a lot of dimensions. No, we don't have a real profile. Um, but, um, yeah, my, my impression mm -hmm. is that uh, these are not only women, which is very easy because we are talking about a sector where uh, I think 18% of women are working. So if we make working time policy and if we make uh, policies for more work-life balance, actually we are doing this for men. I mean, it sounds strange, but uh, it's, it's just uh, depending to, to the people working in the sectors. Um, so these are definitely men taking it. But um, you can see that uh, the, the 28 hours are taken a lot by uh, well-qualified people. And also people with uh, better wages, of course, because you don't get wage compensation in this model. So this is what I said before, people have to be able to afford it financially. And this is, of course, so more an option for people who are earning quite well. Yeah. Uh, I could complete it a little bit. Um, the uh, very uh, wide chosen option of the eight days instead of the 27.5% uh, wage uh, supplement. Uh, this is uh, really first, it is a special offer because it's two days more worth than uh, the, the wage would be. And um, it is the, uh, only the, the, the transformation of a, a supplement wage into free time. So it is uh, uh, no uh, reduction in um, 